Hey everyone, today we are covering three cloud roles. I'm gonna to try to outline a potential career path into these roles, certifications that might be helpful, and sort of skills and responsibilities you'll be using day to day. Uh, I'm gonna to try to cover like the most popular ones that I get asked about. But if you have more suggestions for roles that you wanna see me cover that aren't in this video, let me know in the comments. Uh, two things I wanna mention before we dive into it. I know cloud engineer is probably the most popular role out there. Uh, I just want to say that cloud engineer is extremely generic. At one point in my career, I was a cloud engineer. All it really means is that to some capacity, you're going to be working with cloud infrastructure and cloud platform. And it could end up being any one of the roles in this video or even roles that I don't mention in this video. So yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, and second, your potential in landing any one of these roles will increase exponentially if your people skills are on point if you can interview well, if you can communicate your technical skill set to a technical audience and to say like a business team or to a team that doesn't interact with the tech stack every day. Um, overall, if you're just someone who people enjoy working with, you're gonna have a better chance at landing these roles, right? All right, with all that out of the way, hi, I'm GBS and welcome to a new video. All right, let's kick things off with cloud administrator. So if you're a cloud admin, you're someone who's focused on maintaining already existing infrastructure uh, that your company has in place. Maybe it's been developed or built by a different team. And then your goal is really to just be there and making sure everything's smooth sailing on the day-to-day. -day. In terms of a career path, if you're already sort of uh, like maybe a sysadmin, a network engineer, and some sort of operations role, you can 100% leverage your existing skills and talent into a cloud admin role. Uh, helpful certifications would be the AWS Solutions Architect Associate Level, the Azure Administrator AZ-104, and then Google has the Google Cloud Engineer. This is the only associate level uh, certification that they have available. So I'd recommend taking a look at that. Pick the one for the cloud platform that you're interested in. Uh, when it comes to administration related certifications, it's more about sort of having a wide range of knowledge, of a bunch of different cloud services instead of going in depth with any of them. Um, cloud admin roles tend to be more entry level friendly, which is great for people who are looking to break into the space. Um, but that's also why they expect you to have sort of wide range of a bunch of different services instead of being like an absolute expert in maybe like a smaller range or things like that, right? Um, you're going to need to be able to uh, like, you know, understand infrastructure and application monitoring, uh, things like New Relic, Datadog, Azure Monitor, AWS CloudWatch, et cetera. Uh, in your day-to-day, -day, you could find yourself reviewing or querying, monitoring data, making sure infrastructure and your applications are running smoothly and as expected. Um, you're gonna need to script tasks with some sort of scripting language, Python, Bash, uh, or PowerShell. Um, you know, things like creating new user accounts, new cloud accounts uh, with the proper permissions, or uh, perhaps creating infrastructure that someone else or some other team has provided for you. Um, you're going to also need to be able to work with other you know, other team members, or maybe it's a different team, things like that, uh, to understand how you should maintain new infrastructure that's being built or implemented um, and things like that. And you're going to need to know how to work with cost management and budgets, uh, implement new budgets for new projects, and generate reports on costs. If, if someone asks you, hey, like how much did this service cost for the past two weeks, you need to be able to generate that report. Uh, I think that's pretty much what a cloud admin does. All right, on to the next, Cloud Architect. So a Cloud Architect is someone who is focused on planning a well-built cloud solution, cloud project. Uh, they're often, I would say maybe like, I don't know, 90% of the time, people with years and years of experience and people who have on other projects been like the developers, the, the administrators or, you know, whatnot. Because when it comes to architecting, you need to be able to answer the question of like, what's the best tool for this job? And if you haven't worked with like a bunch of different services on a bunch of different projects, you won't know. It's just like an experience thing, right? So they're not as entry level friendly as other cloud roles. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So in terms of a career path, you could probably leverage if you're already in a cloud role, uh, your years in a cloud role into a cloud architect uh, role. But again, it's probably gonna be hard if this is something you're interested in as someone who's new to the space. Uh, but some helpful certifications would be the Microsoft Certified Azure Solutions Architect Expert, I believe it's two certifications, and then there's the Google Professional Cloud Architect, uh, and then there's the AWS Solutions Architect Pro. Uh, I think all of these actually require two certifications. The Google one may not. I, 
Google it. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure about that, that, that one. Uh, but yeah, you're going to need to like design monitoring, design security solutions, design identity, design storage, design business continuity, design infrastructure, everything. So if someone tells you, hey, I have this application, I need to deploy everything that goes around it, how people access it, how do you just secure it, where, does, where is the storage going to be, like what regions is, do we need to deploy it, and what, like, what are our disaster recovery plans, all of those things, you need to be able to design those things, right? So this is why it's sort of necessary to have a good knowledge of an entire cloud platform, like in and out. You need to know that thing in and out. On to the last one for this video, which is cloud developer. Uh, so a cloud developer is someone who is focused on sort of building solutions using cloud services. Uh, and if you like to program and code and things like that, this is the role for you. In terms of a career path, if you're already, a, say, a software dev or in a role that you program a lot, you could definitely leverage those skills. And I would also say that developer roles are entry level friendly, maybe not as much as admin roles, but still pretty friendly. Uh, so some helpful certifications for here would be the AWS Certified Developer Associate and the Azure Developer, which is the 204. And I think Google Professional Developer, Cloud Developer, something like that. They don't have an associate level one. I don't know why Google's like that. That's just the way they are. Um, but yeah, you have those certification options. Pick the one for the platform that you want to learn. You're going to need to understand uh, application monitoring. So similar to the admin, that the admin's a little bit more focused on infrastructure. You're going to need to be more focused on application because in your code, when you're developing solutions, you're going to need to be able to code things that will send logs and data to your monitoring, things like that. Uh, you're going to have to be able to work with, I said that weird, you're going to need to work with uh, a command line tools, so your cloud platform via command line tools and uh, also work with your cloud platform and your cloud services with SDKs, software development kits. All cloud platforms have different SDKs, so that'd be Java, C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, things like that. Uh, build service solutions, so getting hands-on with something like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions is definitely a plus. Low code and no code solutions is also something I would recommend looking into, things like Logic Apps or the Power Platform when it comes to Azure. Uh, I think AWS has like step functions or cloud functions, something like that. Uh, but yeah, low code and no code is sort of definitely something that you can leverage here. Uh, storage and messaging solutions, like uh, you need to be able to save data somewhere, get data from somewhere, and messaging is sort of the services that will connect all your things together. So understanding messaging uh, and database services as well. And of course, you're going to have to build your solutions in a secure manner. So understanding how applications can implement security uh, to like login or access to other cloud services is important for you to know as well. And that is it for this video. I've covered three. If you want me to cover more, maybe we'll turn this into a series or something like that. Just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.